Okay, everybody. I think it's about time for some more high voltage experiments, don't you? Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with my experimental high voltage setup I've got here. Got the high frequency oscillator here, which uses a 555 timer and a couple of transistors. Completely my own design. And that pulses this MOSFET to turn it on and off really quickly. As you might have noticed, I've only got a small MOSFET connected there. Because I'm saving my bigger MOSFETs for later. This one just came out of a computer power supply. But surprisingly, I looked the part up on the internet and in the datasheet. It says this thing can handle 30 amps continuously, which I think is a little bit optimistic, but I certainly haven't been able to fry it yet. That's been able to handle surges of about 6 amps and... So far, it's held up, so I think it can survive. Also, have a high frequency diode right here to protect it. That came out of another power supply. And of course, over here, the all important flyback transformer. Pretty sure you know what happens. Turn the power on, about 20,000 volts comes out of here. You know the drill. Anyway, this is only a temporary setup because it does perform a little bit erratically. Let's just turn the power on. Okay, so I've got that oscillating at about 10 kilohertz, and this potentiometer is what controls the oscillations. Goes down to 10 kilohertz, and up to goodness only knows what. Pulling about 680 milliamps. If I take a negative wire and put it next near to the flyback, you can see we can pull an arc from that. And if I adjust the frequency, I can fine tune this into the flyback. When that pulls about 3 amps or so, we know we've got the right frequency. There we go. Strange thing is, now it's pulling about 3.5 amps. Now when I pull an arc, as you can see, the current goes down when pulling an arc. I have absolutely no idea why it does that. That is kind of weird. As you can see, when it's not arcing, you get quite a lot of current going through it. Now let's take a closer look at the flyback transformer and see if you can notice anything weird going on. Now I'm going to turn the power on. And as you might be able to see, there are some tiny little arcs coming off that primary winding arc into the flyback which I'm sure is not good and you might also be able to see maybe if I turn the lights off there's a little blue jet of goodness only knows what coming off the wire actually it looks purple in real life but on the camera for some reason it looks blue anyway that was on pulling about 3.6 amps not even warm so, I think what I'm going to have to do is take this primary off and I'm going to rewind it with some of this wire. And I'm going to put multiple taps on the new primary, so we've got taps at every five windings. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to let you watch a video that I did earlier, where I had this connected up with a 2N3055 transistor instead of a MOSFET which gave me more intense arcs but not as big arcs would only work about 10 kilohertz but I'm gonna let you have a look at that while I make a new primary for this All right. in the name of science I wanna see how good this arc looks on camera in the name of science I ain't crazy Why start the smoke? That is glowing red hot. Oh, lots of smoke coming from the wire. Okay, well, it's later on now. And you can see that I've put a new primary on. And unfortunately, I made a little bit of a mistake. And I put a tap at every six winding. But I don't really think that's going to make too much difference. 
also had a little bit of a catastrophe. I don't know how well you can see that, but while I was holding this in the vise, I accidentally broke part of the core. But it's only superficial damage, it still seems to be able to work. As a matter of fact, you can see I've connected the MOSFET to this tap on the winding, which seems to work best. And still works. It actually seems to be working a little better now I've got it on the camera, would you believe it? Usually these things work worse when I've got the camera on. It's about 18,000 volts I'm getting out of that. Judging by how how close the wires need to be for it to start arcing. Been busy burning holes in bits of plastic as you can see here. This is part of a cassette case. And I'll show that I can do that with this. I'll just rest that up against the wire. Now I'll have an arc here. Would you believe it's going around the edge of the plastic? I think I need to rethink that a little bit. Also got a little bit of flames there. The plastic's still soft actually. Just pushed it against this. It's hard now. But in case you're wondering what this great big piece of metal is for, well, that's to shield this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that the microphone's connected to, because without this, this thing would cause some major interference. Anyway, my camera battery is just about to run out again. Let's just see if I can burn another hole in this plastic. Hopefully, with it arcing straight through the plastic this time and not around the side. Well there, as you can see, fresh new hole. Now just before my battery dies, I know some of you might be asking, why am I using this type of wire and why am I using this particular flyback? Well, in my previous experiments, I've gotten the best results with this flyback and the best results with this type of wire. So put them both together and you can see how that's going to be a good idea. Okay, freshly recharged battery now, and it's time to make a better driver for the flyback. First one I'm going to try is one that uses these TL494 chips. I'm only going to use one of them. As you can see, I've already put a couple of IC sockets on this piece of board. I'm going to get all the other components ready and solder them on just like I did before with the 741 project. And after that, I'm going to connect it all up, and we'll see what we've got. This is the circuit I'm going to build, and I'm sure some of you saw this in one of my previous videos. Obviously, I didn't design this, but I'm going to build it. And there are all the parts laid out, as they are on the schematic. So now, I've just got to get on and build this thing. Okay, I've built it. And now it's time to test it. This probably won't even work. The chip will probably go up in smoke the moment I turn it on, which is usually what happens when I make anything, but anyway, turn on and see what happens. Okay, well, I think it might be doing something. I'm getting a reading of 80 milliamps on the meter. So obviously something is going through that MOSFET. Now, I have absolutely no idea whether I'm going to get an arc. I'm going to put this wire close to the high voltage wire and see if we get anything. Oh, well, um, I don't know if you saw that. Definitely getting something. I'm just going to put that wire on a piece of tape or something because it keeps falling out. We are getting a little tiny arc. Well, I'm getting a little tiny arc. That shows it's working, sort of. The arc's very small at the moment, but I'm sure adjusting one of these potentiometers here will change all that. Now I'm going to adjust this one here, which on the schematic is this one, this 22k resistor, 
22k variable resistor. Let's see if anything happens. Okay, I think this one might be for the frequency because it seems to. I was hearing a high pitched whine and now turning that it does sound a little bit lower. You probably don't hear that on the tape, but I can hear it. Okay, so that's definitely for the frequency. Okay, let's see if we get any more of an arc. Yeah, get a little bit of a, get a little squeaky arc there. I'm just gonna go through all the range and see what happens. Okay. Well, that's looking promising. Very thin arc, but that shows the chip seems to be working. Now I'm going to turn it up all the other way. barely get anything. Okay, I'm going to turn it down. Turn it down to about there. Well, I'm going to see what the other one does, and the other potentiometer. So I'm going to adjust this, try not to get my hand in the way, because I'm trying to read the voltage and um, the amperage on the meter. Let's see, I'll adjust this. Okay, the amperage is going up. We're up to 1.11 amps now. Let's see if this arcs. Oh! It sure do. Oh, we had about 4 amps there. This thing seems to be working good. I think the next thing to do is find a good way to tune this so I get a good arc, put an audio signal through it, and see if we can get a singing arc from this, which we should be able to, because that's what this circuit was designed mainly for. The only thing that does puzzle me is why does it need such a bloody big capacitor for the audio input? And the schematic. 47 nanofarad capacitor. I know he made a little mistake here and didn't want um put two kilovolts there. That's actually supposed to be 250 volts. But why a capacitor of that much that can handle that much voltage for the audio input is really weird. Anyway, I think that's what I'm going to test now, fellow YouTubes. I have good news and bad news. Most of it's bad. The good news is, I was able to get a singing arc. And now for the bad news. It wasn't a very good singing arc. I barely had any volume, and the sound quality was quite bad. It was quite distorted. Also, there's been some fatalities. Firstly, this MOSFET here, I accidentally put a 10 amp surge through it and killed it. Stayed in the data sheet that that could handle about 30 amps. Couldn't even handle 10 amps. The gate and the drain are completely internally shorted out now, so that thing is dead. I replaced that MOSFET with my two big ones. Those two haven't fried yet, but unfortunately, this diode I was using did fry. I'm, th I've, I'm thinking this time it was too much voltage that killed that. Like the MOSFET, that has just gone completely shorted out inside. So, I replaced that diode with this one here. Managed to find a nice fast one in my parts box. It's got a similar recovery time to a UF4007, so it's quite adequate for this circuit. So anyway, after replacing those parts, I decided to try to get the best voltage possible out of the flyback. 
So I connected this screwdriver up to the high voltage wire, as you can see here, and touched this bulb with it, and I adjusted the frequency on the driver circuit, observing what was going on in the bulb. The more plasma and the more brighter it was inside the bulb, the more voltage I was getting. And I can say with confidence that I did find the right frequency. And when I found that right frequency, it overloaded the flyback, got some really nasty flash over, and I ended up killing it. Now if you observe closely, I'm only going to do this briefly. As you can see, start smoking immediately. You might even be able to see something glowing in there. That ain't good. I can still get a little bit of arcing off it. As you can see. So, it looks like I'm going to have to find myself another flyback. This is the only one I could find that works good because it doesn't have the filter capacitor in it. All the other flybacks I have, I suspect have that capacitor in them, because I certainly can't use those for producing arcs. So I'm a little bit stuck here. So, um, I guess that's it for this project for now. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to try to open one of these up so we can see what's inside. But until then, or rather, until next time, goodbye, because I'm sure this video is too long already. It's probably gone on for about four hours now. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe. You'll be glad you did. And tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his electronic workshop. And if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Or if you want to see more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.